Before we get started with that first cut, uh, I'd like you to take a look at the manual that ships with Origin. Uh, in there we have basic info on safety. Uh, this builds on regular shot protocol, uh, hearing protection, eye protection, uh, all shields in place, respiratory protection. Uh, and then there's the standard hand router uh, protocol on top of that. Uh, and we're not going to go into detail here, just take a look through the manual and it will cover the basics. Um, beyond that, uh, the video prior to this in this series is the air cut video that will train you in what to expect uh, from Origin's behavior, each option in the user interface, and uh, give you an opportunity to experiment in a quiet, safe environment before commencing your first cut. So we're going to cut the map of America exactly the same as we did in our air cut demonstration, only this time we'll be using an actual cutter. So uh, here are the uh, accessories you'll need to perform these cuts. Uh, there's clamps, we need to hold our uh, panels down firmly and stop them moving around. There's hearing protection and eye protection uh, for safety. And then there's double-sided tape. Uh, this will stop anything moving around once we cut it out of a panel of ply. Uh, and then these are all included in the accessories pouch. So there's the wrench, the hex key, our uh, shaper tape, and then uh, the actual cutter we use is going to be the uh, engraving cutter. So first up, we're going to drop in a spoil board. This is a uh, half inch MDF panel. Uh, basically the idea is this is a sacrificial element that we uh, cut through uh, when we cut through our ply. We cut into this a little bit. Um, just to make sure we get a clean cut along the bottom of our ply panel. So uh, this protects your workbench. Uh, you can see where we've cut uh, previous projects into this to get a clean cut on the underside of the panel. Next up, the ply panel itself. So this is a uh, half inch uh, Baltic birch, I think they call it, um, or Euro ply. This is a, uh, a good grade of ply that's, uh, that's great for cutting and engraving without giving any uh, chip out or uh, strange fuzzy behavior. Um, it's nice and stable. So we're going to cut down here um, and I've got this double-sided tape because I'm going to put tape up here and then flip it over um, so that when we cut out our states they don't, uh, they don't fly around, they don't become detached from our panel when we uh, complete the cut. So I'll just put a couple of strips of this tape down One more. We'll do one more. So this is just good practice uh, to make sure that your uh, elements remain intact and don't get damaged when you, uh, when you finish up your cuts. So just peel this off. Um, so double-sided tape is a little bit expensive, but uh, it's much cheaper than damaged plywood. So uh, we often use it. So I'll flip this over and you'll see now this area here, uh, if I press down on it firmly, uh, should be nice and stable. I can cut elements out of this and they won't fly around. So, uh, so we'll be over here uh, cutting uh, and this just holds everything secure. So uh, we don't need to get too crazy with clamping. Uh, in fact, Origin is only interested in where it is relative to the tape. So uh, that's any amount reliable for this particular cut. So uh, then we'll tape it up. Um, now I'm only going to cut down here, so uh, there's no point in taping the whole thing. So I'll just lay some tape like so. This is probably going to be more tape than I need, but uh, should be good. So we're all taped up and double-sided taped. Uh, we'll bring Origin in and I'll unplug the power to the spindle, for starters. We're going to look at the scanning menu. So uh, currently we're looking through the camera at the live view. Uh, that's not what we want to do when we actually cut. We want to be using uh, what we call a workspace. And to create that, we scan in using the camera uh, all the positions of these markers. We're going to basically survey our workspace, survey this plane. So uh, I hit the scan button and uh, the green button here. And you'll see every time uh, Origin recognizes a marker, it's going to highlight it blue. So now my job is to just slowly and smoothly move Origin along 
and uh, point it towards all the uh, all the f these markers um, on the on the surface. So I, I'm keeping it on the surface and just moving it slowly and uh, calmly, and it's going to take all those images and just uh, measure the positions of all the markers and uh, bake them out as a uh, as a workpiece workspace. So you can see, see here it's saying uh, updating. So what we were seeing was a quick temporary visualization and now it's going through and doing a very accurate uh, calculation. So this is going to enable us to A, see the panel, uh, any marks or anything we've made on the panel. If we've got little reference positions, we can see the grain, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but also Origin now has a, uh, this is like locked in time. This is its uh, understanding of this, uh, this panel of ply. Okay, we'll swap out the uh, spindle. Put the uh, hex key in the side here. Undo about uh, half a turn. That should be enough to easily get the, uh, the spindle out. I'll move Origin to the side. We'll look at this. Now if I hold down the locking mechanism, the spindle is now locked. I can loosen the collet. Uh, and then the, this is our engraving cutter. Um, I insert it down and I make sure the cutting flutes don't go uh, below the collet itself. So I insert it a reasonable distance, but not so far that the cutting flutes are messing with the collet. Um, then I can tighten that up, still holding the uh, locking mechanism. Now uh, with that released, it'll turn freely and we can reinsert it. So the slot in the back will help uh, index against this little pin in the back of the, uh, the spindle clamp. So the buttons face front, uh, we align this vertically, and then uh, it shouldn't take any effort at all to just slide it down, and you'll hear it uh, mate against the bottom there. Once again, turn it around, and uh, with the hex key, we can tighten this up. So it's uh, thumb and forefinger tight. Uh, not super aggressively tight, uh, that should hold everything in place. And now we've got a protective screen in place, our, our cutters installed with a collet tightened correctly, and our uh, spindle clamp is tightened correctly as well. So we can now plug in our power supply as we're ready to cut. So uh, we've finished scanning, we're now moving to the design mode. Uh, so we're going to place our file. So that's the little plus button up there. That brings us into a USB drive. So uh, I'm going to plug this in and you'll see it populated with all the files that are on board. So we'll scan down. Uh, we're going to cut America. So there we go. Now keep in mind the bottom of this shape and the center of the shape aligns with the very center of our cutter here. So just if you need a reference for, uh, for globally where you're placing things, uh, it'll be aligned north of that and out to the side. So we zoom out to the extents of the file we're placing and then Origin is behaving like a big mouse where we, uh, where we choose where we want to place it. So uh, I'm going to place it here and you'll see the green button is telling me if I hit the handle green button I will place. So uh, I'll press that and we zoom in to the, uh, the framing, the zoom level we expect to see when we cut. So uh, now we'll move to the cutting mode. So we still have the old settings, a 16th inch bit cutter described and our uh, air cut height. So we're going to go in and change these. Um, so first up, I'm going to choose 0.01 inches deep. So this is how far we're going to cut with our engraving bit. Uh, we're going to leave it as an online. We don't want any offset. And we are going to tell it we're using a V60. So this is a V bit, an engraving bit that's 60 degrees uh, the point. Um, so it's now set it to a, just a very narrow uh, cut width um, and then it's saying do we want to touch off, which uh, yes we do. So uh, I'll hit the plunge button. Uh, hold still while plunging. Uh, the spindle's moving down, it's going to touch the surface and then measure uh, that height. So now it confidently knows uh, what height z equals zero is, so we can cut relative to this. Now. We're about to cut this. Uh, one quick thing of note, uh, we might do a little um, pass over this. Uh, just keeping an eye on the tape health meter. So 
it's 100% full the whole way, which means uh, we can comfortably cut this whole thing without having to worry about tape. So uh, that's always a good thing to do before commencing a big cut. Um, this is ready to cut now. Okay, so I have my uh, eye protection on, my hearing protection on, I've got my spoil board in place, I have my double-sided tape in place underneath the area I intend to cut. Uh, I'm going to insert the dust extraction, this is the vacuum cleaner going in the uh, dust port. Uh, we have our clamps in place, we've scanned our tape in, and we've placed our file, we've set all our settings uh, to a V-bit, to a 0.01 inch depth, uh, and we've checked that our tape is good throughout the whole area we intend to cut. Um, so now we're in the cut mode. Uh, we've set our spindle speed uh, down low because we're engraving. We're ready to cut. I'm going to hover over a position that I want to start at. I'm going to power up Origin and tap the uh, start cutting button. Exactly the same as it was in uh, Air cut mode. So I'm going to hold down the auto mode and just follow along. So that's your first ever cut with Origin. So there's a Texas cutout. Um, you're welcome to continue engraving states uh, until you're familiar with uh, Origin's behavior. So you can uh, follow the line round and are getting uh, good quality outcomes with, uh, with engraving. We're going to move on and uh, put in another cutter. So the first thing to do is unplug the power from the spindle. That makes sure that's safe. And we rotate to the right and take our hex key and undo the spindle clamp. Uh, this loosens up the spindle uh, and now we can pull it out straight up but the spindle is able to slide out effortlessly. So we'll flip it over, uh, hold down the spindle lock. This, uh, make sure it engages, uh, you'll feel it stops the collet and the cutter rotating. So uh, now if I uh, go here and take the wrench, I can loosen that up. So just hold it firmly and rotate. Uh, there's actually two little points that it, uh, there's friction there, so you'll need the wrench to overcome both. Uh, now I can remove the cutter, that's the engraving cutter, and now we'll take the 8 inch cutter and insert that. So you'll notice the, uh, the shank, the uh, unground area here, uh, is going to be inserted most of the way in here. We don't want any of the uh, ground uh, cutting flutes to be uh, beneath the collet, uh, where the collet enga engages. So this makes sure we have a uh, sturdy fastening there. So uh, now I tighten up this, uh, holding down the spindle lock, and it's just a firm tighten, uh, not super aggressive. So I'll bring Origin back, uh, and we're looking at this uh, slot in the back is what aligns with the pin in the back of the uh, spindle clamp. So now I hold that vertically slide it down. Uh, it won't require much force to do this and then you'll feel it engage with the bottom of the uh, of the clamp there. So turning to the right again, uh, take my hex key and just tighten this up again uh, finger tight. Um, so that's the cutter secured in the collet and then the spindle secured in the spindle clamp. Uh, we're off uh, and now we can plug in the power and we're good to start cutting. So I'm going to bring Origin over here. Okay, so we're going to change this to an inside cut. Uh, and then we, this is our little pre-flight check. We're an eighth inch cutter. Uh, we are going to do a touch off. So we move to somewhere that we haven't cut and just say touch off and then plunge. This is when the spindle drops down and uh, measures uh, Z equals zero. Don't touch Origin while it's doing that. Just let it do its thing. Now we'll go back here. So uh, we're going to cut to 0.05 inches and we're good to go. This one we won't do a uh, roughing pass. We won't do an offset. We see we've done a touch off. A tape health meter is good. Uh, one thing to check before we start cutting 
uh, we want to make sure we speed this up. So uh, for engraving, we're running at around three. Uh, for actually cutting, we're going to want it up around uh, five. So now it's going to be rotating quickly. Um, you'll get familiar with how the uh, cutting sounds and what a healthy amount of uh, spindle speed and uh, feed rate uh, sounds like. But in the meantime, just set it to a high value. Five is good and we'll cut. So you can see there, we've cut out uh, exactly the shape we intended to. Um, and now we're going to cut down to the same height. Uh, we're going to remove the material on the inside here. So uh, we'll leave the eighth inch cutter in here and we'll turn this into a pocket. So uh, now you'll notice we're cutting uh, all the material out in between uh, and I can move wherever I like. So uh, we'll power up the vacuum and uh, continue. So you see there I did sort of a mow the lawn type pattern and uh, we can keep track of how much material we've removed based on the, uh, the blue cut history showing us. So now we can see we've cut that all down to a, uh, a height of 0.05 inches there uh, and that's how a pocket works. So uh, next up we'll actually uh, cut a state up. Now we'll move over to California. Uh, currently it's a cut online. We're actually going to cut the whole state out. Uh, so it's going to take a few passes with a 1 8 inch cutter. If we wanted to cut it uh, in fewer passes we'd use a quarter inch cutter or something like that. That would enable us to cut through this in two passes or three passes if we wanted to do a roughing pass and a finishing pass. Um, we're going to do it in, it'll take five with this little cutter, but it'll keep all the detail, um, or a lot of it. So uh, first up, we'll tell it we're going to cut uh, on the outside of the line. So even though it's described in the SVG as a cut on line, we can change that here. And we're going to add an offset of 0.01 inches. So you'll notice our tool paths have, uh, in real time, moved away from the final dimension of California. So uh, it's just going to leave a little sliver of material on that edge. And once we're done with our roughing passes that are going to cut through most of the material, we're going to come back and do a finishing pass that will be just a very light pass at the end that will cut all the way through removing that little skin and uh, cutting through the very bottom. So uh, it's going to remain held in place with double-sided tape and we're going to leave a little skin on the bottom. So uh, pre-flight check, we cut the depth of our current cutter. So uh, it's a 0.125 inch cutter, 1 8th, so 0.125. Okay, uh, now we can set about cutting this. So this is the first pass. It's a roughing pass because we have a small offset and we're cutting the depth of the diameter of our cutter. One thing worth noting, uh, we're actually going to overlap the pocket uh, of the adjacent state. So um, that's, that's uh, just something to consider, the, uh, the cutter diameter when you're placing objects next to one another. So I'm going to power this up, turn on the vacuum and uh, start cutting.
Uh, now worth mentioning, you'll see there's a little fuzz on these top edges. Uh, that is the result of what we call upcutting cutters. So as they rotate around, they pull fibers uh, up out of the material. So uh, we'll get more, we'll have a, a video describing uh, down cutting, compression cutting, and uh, straight flutes uh, and up cutting in, in future. So we want to continue moving at a, uh, at a nice uh, speed. You'll get used to listening to what the sound of a good cutter sounds like when it's properly loaded up. Uh, we don't want to linger in place. If we linger in place, uh, we generate a lot of heat. The cut is just basically rubbing against the, uh, the wood. Uh, a, it will diminish the life of your cutting uh, tool, the, um, in this case, the eighth inch cutter. Uh, but B, it will also uh, burn the wood. It's like both a uh, bad idea because it takes a long time to sand out burnt wood and uh, you just don't want things catching fire. Um, next up, a uh, quarter inch. So uh, this is our second pass. We're going to cut uh, the same depth again added on top of what we were. So uh, two times one eighth is a quarter. What we're doing at the moment is what we call rough passes. So each, each one of these is offset from the final dimension. We leave a little bit of material uh, in place so that when we do our last cut, we can just uh, remove the offset and cut exactly the shape uh, of our final dimension. So we get very clean lines. Uh, this is how you would approach cutting very accurately um, with Origin. So I'm gonna say quarter of an inch deep and I'm gonna leave the offset the same so our, our roughing passes are identical. So next pass. So we'll do this at the new depth, 0.375. So uh, I select depth, 0.375, okay. So we need to leave a skin uh, on the bottom to hold this in place. Ultimately, we want to cut at uh, 0.5. So I'm going to do 0.48. Uh, so here we're going to leave a little skin on the bottom. So uh, usually you'd measure your plywood. Uh, it's not always reliable to assume a half inch panel of ply is going to be exactly half an inch. Um, so if, if this is half an inch, uh, we're going to leave a little skin on the bottom. So that will enable our um, finishing pass to cut through that. And that will make it a, uh, a very low uh, resistance cut. There'll be very little forces present when we cut the final pass because there'll be no material. We're cutting minimal material below and uh, removing that tiny little offset we added. So this will be a... Uh, a roughing pass leaving a skin on the bottom and uh, for a finishing pass we'll be m removing a, a very small amount of material on the sides and straight down so uh, the uh, the whole system will not be loaded up it won't be under load when we're cutting so we should be able to get a very clean accurate cut to finish with So we've cut almost the whole way through. Okay, and our finishing pass uh, will be done at uh, 0.51.
so that's the depth. So it's going to cut through our ply and then a little bit into our spoil board to make sure we get a clean cut at the bottom. Uh, the one other thing to consider with a finishing pass is we remove our offset. So you'll notice our tool paths are now following the final dimension of California rather than uh, adding that little offset. So this will go around and clean up that edge and uh, cut with uh, maximum precision. Now uh, we're going to start cutting up here, uh, go the whole way around, and we're hoping that this doesn't move at all uh, when we finish because the double sided on tape on the bottom will hold it. So I'm going to power it up, vacuum. Okay, move that to the side. So there's a California cutout. That's with an eighth inch cutter. And we were um, using a roughing pass uh, for the first several passes and then a finishing pass to finish up. So you can see the results, uh, very clean, accurate cuts. And that's all due to the, uh, the way we handled finishing passes there. Uh, if we wanted to cut this quicker, we'd use a bigger cutter, a uh, bigger diameter. So um, this is a quarter inch example. We used an eighth inch.